Can you talk about the working definition of anti-Semitism? Uh, yes. What that is, and uh, I'm sure it sounds very ap appealing and innocuous to people, but. So I think you know if we look at the at the progress of of uh, of the Palestine of the issue of Palestine or the issue of Israel of Zionism, you know, the Zionists have been very good at promoting themselves and promoting their ideology going back 100 years, I mean, way before the state of Israel was established. You know, I always tell people, I have a poster at home advertising a lecture by my grandfather in 1920, in, I think it's Kiev or something, to talk about Eretz Israel, to talk about the Jews in the land of Israel. And he was part of this very um, uh, pretty sophisticated group of Zionists who are well-spoken, who were doctors and whatever, secular, you know, right. very secular. They didn't look like Jews. They shaved their beards, of course, and they, you know, and they, so the Europeans, the Americans felt like they could talk to these people. They didn't look like Jews, you know. Uh, and so anti-Semitism kind of didn't apply to them. And, uh, and they, you know, they're the predecessors of APAC and the Jewish lobby and oh, the Zionist lobby that we know today. Now, I think what has been happening is that there is an, there's been an erosion in the legitimacy of Israel and the legitimacy of Zionism. And to combat that, they came up with this really brilliant idea of conflating anti-Semitism with a rejection of Israel and rejection of Zionism. So they came out with this new definition. It's called the IHRA, which is the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. Right which I don't know anybody who really knows anything about specifically who these people are. And they came out with what they call a working non-binding definition. And this definition gives several examples of what anti-Semitism is. And in the examples, Israel is mentioned seven or eight times. And what they did was they conflated rejecting Israel and rejecting Zionism with anti-Semitism. And they've been very, very successful, this campaign, for. Uh, governments and non-governmental organizations, universities, churches, you name it, to adopt the IHRA definition because there's a huge increase in anti-Semitism and anti-Semitism is on the rise and cases of attacks against Jews are on the rise and so on. And so we have to accept this new definition because saying that anti-Semitism is just racism against Jews is not good enough. We have to say that it can't, that it has to be you know, there has to be an Israel element within it. Because now, even though it's not binding, uh, and it's kind of only a working definition, once an institution you belong to, whether it's a governmental institution or an NGO or whatever the case may be, now you're kind of bound by it. So now if you say that Zionism, and this is one of the examples, if you say that Israel is a racist endeavor, now that qualifies as, as anti-Semitism. And they go county by county within the United States. Montgomery County, which is a, in Maryland, which is adjacent to Washington, D.C., just adopted this. In secret, by the way, nobody knew when, the, when this was gonna happen. Nobody was part of the conversation, but whoop, suddenly people in Montgomery com County woke up one day and discovered that now their county has adopted this new definition because they stand with our Jewish brothers and sisters and because we have to fight anti-Semitism. By all means, let's fight anti-Semitism. By all means. Racism has to be, you know, there has to be no tolerance for, for racism. There has to be no tolerance for anti-Semitism. Which is why we need to be in opposition to Zionism because Zionism is, an, is a racist ideology. And they know that. So in order to prevent this erosion and the legitimacy of Zionism and the legitimacy of Israel, they conflated the two and they've done a very good job. As they always do, by the way. A very good job in presenting their case and pushing this campaign forward. And here we are today where it's everywhere. The IHRA definition has been accepted, uh, adopted by you know, practically everyone and everything. And the irony, of course, is that that in itself, the idea that Zionism and Jewishness are interchangeable is an anti-Semitic trope, right? People, anti-Semites like to use the word Zionist as if it means Jews, the dual loyalty oath. So these very people who claim to be combating anti-Semitism are actually perpetuating it. 
Yeah, it's it's an absurd it's an absurd notion. If you want to fight racism, we need to fight racism. Yeah. You know, if we want to fight racism, we need to fight racism. We need to get to the sort to the roots of racism, and we need to educate people, and we need to make sure that you know uh, that anti-racism is something that we teach, that we practice, which is why we need to be anti-Zionist. You know, but um, they like to blur the line. They have to blur the lines, or else they're going to lose their legitimacy. And that's exactly what they've been able to do. Yeah. Yeah. Ali Abunima from Electronic Intifada says that organizations like ADL or APAC will both sides anti-Semitism. So they'll say, well, on the one hand, we have anti-Semites on the right who are white supremacists who shoot up synagogues. But on the other hand, on the left, we have people who support BDS, which, of course, totally trivializes anti-Semitism. 